a very interesting letter from Michael Flower. Doug Horn talked of a Hollywood, California group doing a high-resolution scan of the Z film. And it would show the back of JFK's head in the film and show the edited, blacked-out blotches used to cover up shots from the front. The Dallas doctors at Parkland spoke of witnessing a blowout to the back of JFK's head resulting from a shot from the front. I watched a new documentary of Coup and Camelot that spoke of the 6K scans and had Doug Horn in the documentary. However, I didn't see any part of the documentary that mentioned the Z film specifically and showed the block, the crude blotches edited in to cover up a shot from the front. So my question is, will these high resolution scans involve something in the future or were the scans not fruitful? All right. What Michael Flowers is talking about is something that I saw at the home of the two people who have been working on this. What they're talking about is a very specific black marking. Now, that would be a rather easy thing to apply, okay, if that's all you're talking about. That wouldn't be that difficult. And when you see their version of it, it does look like that's the case. The problem with it is this, is that they're working from a third-generation copy of the Z film. And I told them right off the bat, I go, well, what if it doesn't show up in a second generation or first generation? Then the other side, I mean, you can tell Jerry Posner is going to come out of his house and start screaming that it's an artifact. Okay, and they and they, they were very fully aware of this. And so they said, we've been getting the runaround. Now, this was several years ago when Gary Mack was still around. All right, and so I said, who's been giving you the runaround? Well, we try and go to Time Life because they, of course, own this Bruder film, all right? And they said, you got to go to the National Archives. When we go to the National Archives, they say, you got to go to the sixth floor. When we go to the sixth floor, they send us to Time Life. So, in other words, everybody's claiming they don't have it. But they did exist because Tink Thompson had them when he was working for Life magazine back in 1966 when they were going to do a special report on the Kennedy assassination. I know for a fact he saw them, and I also know for a fact that Ray Marcus saw him when he went to visit him at Life magazine. So if you follow the chain of evidence, maybe Time Life didn't have them, and then when they went ahead and, and gave the film to the National Archives, maybe they were there. Or maybe the Zapruder family gave them to the sixth floor. But from what they're telling me, everybody's saying, pointing the finger at somebody else. And so they can't find them to test their work. It, it's, it's very weird that they, could say they should come up with this obstruction. But as far as I know, that's the state of their evidence so far about this high-resolution scan. Maybe we should make this clear. First generation refers to the first copy made. So in other words, if you had first generation transparencies, they came from the original. Second generation refers to copies made from the first generation. All right. So it did not come from the original. It came from the first generation copy. Third generation, which is what these people have, is a copy made from the second generation. That's why when you're considering genuineness and validity, it's important to get to the first generation. Tink Thompson knows that these exist because he worked from them way back there in 1966 when he was at Life magazine. When he was doing Six Seconds in Dallas, which was published in 67, he was going to include first generation transparencies in that book. But then at the last minute, Life magazine withdrew their permission. And so what he ended up with is um, artist renditions of those first generation transparencies. That's what we're talking about when we, when we say first generation, second generation, third generation. You know, why anybody would want to deny and give these people to run around like that 
is is very you know puzzling to me. I don't understand it myself. It shows you this is still a live case. You're talking over 50 years past Kennedy's death, and they're still pointing a finger at each other. No, they've got it. No, they've got it. No, they've got it.